how are you doing? This is Martin from Gardens for Life. In this quick video, I'm going to show you the making of, of our new garden extension, which is just onto our uh, pizza garden, which I'm standing in at the moment. Two years ago, we actually created this uh, garden that's in the shape of a pizza. It's about 10 meters in diameter. And there is some videos on our YouTube channel and website uh, just on exactly how we made it. Uh, there's a three part series. And now we're going to show you our expansion, which is basically another five or six pizza gardens onto it. We've put down about 100 tons of compost, which is about six large trailers or truckloads. And um, it turned out to be about, um, maybe about on average five inches in depth. We would have preferred a little more, but that's all the compost we could get or afford for now. We've planted about a couple of thousand plants into it too that we've grown ourselves. And we'll show you that process now. And we're gonna give you a weekly update, like a vlog on this garden and just take a walk around um, as we go. So just to show you the progress and how things are going. And we hopefully you learn from our successes and mistakes. For those of you wondering, these are the magnificent um, great mullen. They are almost finished flowering now and they're gonna go to seed. These seed pods have actually started to swell. So we are going to actually do our um, winter collection pre-sale uh, shortly. So stay tuned for that and get in on it while you can, while stocks last. Got another bit of cardboard. It's great stuff from our local furniture warehouse. Wow, a van load is quite a bit of cardboard. Check it out. I think we're going to be able to cover most of our back garden with that and um, just some job to move it now and take the tape off it. For those of you who have seen the uh, pizza garden making of videos, there's actually a three part series. We covered um, the entire pizza garden which is about 10 by 10 meters if you include the outside paths with this much car cardboard, so one van load basically. Here it is now. <laughs> Going to get some compost spread. I know what you're thinking, no dig with a digger. Uh, he's lost it now. No, bear with me on this one. The digger has much more reach than a front loader of a tractor. So you're able to actually spread the compost uh, in situ when you get it dumped. Let's uh, say where you actually are going to um, have the garden. And um, we did leave some of the grass in the middle uh, until afterwards which he did have to scrape, unfortunately. And um, as you'll see later when I give you a little tour, um, that some of the grass is actually even coming through again after scraping it. However, the majority of it is um, either smothered by with uh, black plastic or with cardboard, so that we are keeping the existing soil structure. We did keep some of the grass in the middle until the digger got here because we wanted him to be able to drive in um, with a trailer full of compost without making too much muck. And the grass helps with that. But in the end, we've had to scrape it, of course, uh, in order to uh, dump our compost on top. So we're going to bring these two piles of compost. We'll bring those over to the back garden. 
and one more here. Hopefully it's enough of it. We shall see. I'm afraid I don't think we'll have quite enough compost to cover all of this. What? That's a lot of piles. Yeah, but we'll one, spread them out in a minute. Three, four, one, six. Six pines. Yeah, and well he's getting two or three more, and I still don't think we'll have quite enough. <laughs> so our back garden is well underway. We are going to drop, drop more compost and spread it with the help of a digger. But we're not the ones driving it. We have a professional digger driver for that. They can get more work done in an hour that we can in a day, just learning how to drive it. One more. Oh, what treasure did you find there in the garden? Look at that, a Boston cup. <laughs> That's a real treasure, we'll clean that up. Unfortunately, we have no footage of uh, planting all of our plants into this new garden because the majority of them have been planted um, in the evening time when the light conditions uh, weren't great, especially for a GoPro like the one we're using. So um, we'll have to skip that part, but therefore I'm going to give you a little tour now about two weeks after we started planting it. And we finished planting only just about a week ago. So we have made some major progress here. We've extended our pizza garden, which many of you undoubtedly know. It's about, probably about 100, just under 100 square meters. And um, we've added on to it. And we are going to start planting. So the paths are very basic just a foot wide, literally a foot because I actually made them like this just by walking so it's actually literally a foot wide and um, we just made two sort of balloon shapes with one line down the middle and into a center point which is down to here and we're going to start planting up this is the Brassica Island, which also used to be known as the Bumblebee Island because when you could see the paths it looked like a bumblebee from the sky. But there's quite a bit of planting space here now and it's time to get busy and plant it all up. I'm sure it'll be quite a transformation. So we're going to plant all these seedlings, mainly flowers and vegetables. 
There's also some more over here. And of course in the greenhouse, these all desperately need to go out because it is way too hot in here. It must be like 50 degrees or 45 degrees in here. There's some oriental poppies, the rhubarb, German chamomile, lemon balm, a few vegetables here, some echinacea, chives, these lovely flowers here. That is the Oxalis triangularis and the Iron Cross Oxalis. Those will actually be available as bulbs in the winter time. Hello, you gonna plant some stuff out the back? Don't forget to subscribe and this a good video. Alright, okay. That was not set up. This is thyme here, we're gonna plant some of them too. And we have a few more yakons that will be planted out. We're gonna plant the rest of them in the back. And this is some Waltham uh, butternut squash. Probably too late in the year to plant that, but we'll give it a try anyway. This is um, ashwagandha, which is Indian ginseng, uh, which is really good for a uh, bit of a coffee um, replacement. We also have first grapes this year. And a lovely jet black hollyhock which self-seeded here. And here is the garden now, about two weeks after planting. It took about 10 days to plant all of these. All sorts of different flowers and vegetables and bits and pieces. You can see there's a bit of grass coming through, but we're going to um, correct that. Of course, um, it has been a huge project for us, a huge expansion, and it wasn't perfect, as you can see here. We're going to have to do a little bit of uh, work just to take away that grass. We might just scrape that away, scrape away the compost, take away whatever roots we can and then just uh, put compost on top of cardboard then. That should stop it. You can see we have some rhubarb here and some yakon, plenty of lemon balm. And we made the paths the same way as we normally do. We we're going to cover them in wood chips eventually. We simply did the paths um, just like a balloon all the way around and one straight through. And then we just did stepping stones, a bit like stepping stones without stones, you can see here these indentations where we simply, where we can walk, but we can still plant all around us. So that's handy. And we interplanted some uh, onions and garlic between other crops that are going to finish before the winter, like these yakons. Here's an American elder. These are dahlias. We did do some experiments too, where we just planted, we just kind of planted or scattered a mixture of seeds in this particular area here. Well, it is a bit of a midnight planting. Because this is the time of the day that I get time to actually do the gardening. So, um, besides all the rest of the things going on, through midnight gardening. Oh, where am I going to plant this mix? Probably better to film this during the day. There's a good spot. Here goes nothing. Try not to sow them way too thick or way too dense. As you can see, it's not very evenly planted, but that's okay. We also planted some potatoes in between. And this area too, you can see the little potato plants coming up. Now I know this is the beginning of August. Um, if 
you honestly believe that our potatoes are going to finish before the first uh, hard frost, um, hopefully they'll get 90 days, which is what it takes for them to mature. But who here reckons that we'll get a, a harvest, a reasonable harvest? Please leave a comment below. We'd be highly interested in uh, finding out whether or not we were too late to get those planted um, at the end of July. So that'd be very interesting to know. I know some people grow potatoes for uh, Christmas just to have fresh potatoes. And hopefully these will actually um, provide us with a decent enough harvest. You can see here some chard and some Chinese yam. Some thyme plants which we will actually use as plants and as a herb. Here you have the oxalis which we will have in the winter collection as a bulb and as the scales of the root. This is Portuguese kale. It's the only place actually where we haven't planted anything yet in this particular area. Some Siberian kale and red Russian kale and some beetroots here. Maybe a little late for beetroots but hopefully we'll still get a good size bulb on those. So this is a mixture of yakons and some pumpkins that have gone in a bit late too. And we'll go around the big balloon which is the outer pad. Here's another American elder. Might just pinch out that flower because that way the plant will have more energy to make more wood. And we'll have a little bit of cleaning to do already. There's a thistle and a blackberry plant coming through. That's okay though. We weren't expecting to do no dig to, and get away with doing no work at all or no weeding. There's some kohlrabi, elephant garlic already planted. Some more lemon balm. This is sorrel. We don't want more of that. We have enough of that in the field. This is something special, this is ashwagandha, which is Indian ginseng. A bit like coffee, but it's good for you. And we obviously have some flowers scattered in between too, like this, the red hot poker plant. So we've turned an unproductive space into a very productive one. Thanks so many for watching the video and stay tuned for our vlog updates. We're going to do a weekly tour of this garden, maybe a five to ten minute walk every week now, just for the crack to see what's, what else, how, how it's developing and how, what kind of plants we're growing and we'll talk about those. Uh, please give us a quick thumbs up if you don't mind, that would really help us out a lot. And if you're looking to support the work we do, you can um, check out our members page uh, for all the benefits. We also have some plants, cuttings, tubers and bulbs and workshops available uh, on our website. So take a look at that and uh, there are some no-dig workshops and plant propagation workshops coming up. So um, take a look if you're interested and if you're near uh, the Midlands of Ireland. All in all, we're very happy with the results and we're going to be um, planting up what's left, what space is actually left available, which is very little. Um, we had to empty our greenhouse. Um, which we had kept all of the little seedlings in during the heat wave in July um, because we had been waiting on getting this project um, underway. So um, just about worked out okay. We're still, we're halfway through the growing season now, just a little beyond and um, things are, plants are settling down and plants are now starting to grow. Hopefully the majority of them will be okay, except for maybe the potatoes, but who here could tell us if the potatoes will be okay if you plant them in late uh, July. Please leave a comment below.